Today, we delve into the enigmatic tales of the lost legions of ancient Rome. We will explore three of the most fascinating and mysterious stories. The fate of Crassus's legions, the disappearance of the Ninth Spanish Legion in Britain, and the legendary martyrdom of the Theban Legion. Join us to discover the secrets behind these legions. The first story we will explore is the fate of Crassus's legions in the year 53 BC. Crassus was one of the richest and most powerful men in Rome. He was part of the first triumvirate, along with Pompey and Julius Caesar. He had a dream to conquer the Parthian Empire and rival the achievements of Alexander the Great. To fulfill his dream, he gathered seven legions, about 42,000 soldiers, and marched eastward to face the Parthian Empire. But his dream turned into a nightmare. Crassus made a series of blunders that led him and his army into a trap. The Parthians, led by Serena, outsmarted and outmatched the Romans with their superior tactics and weapons. They surrounded and slaughtered the legions in the Battle of Carhe. Crassus was captured and executed in a gruesome way. He had molten gold poured down his throat as a symbol of his greed. More than half of his army was killed, and the rest were either captured or escaped. But what happened to the survivors? Did they ever return to Rome? or did they end up somewhere else? According to some sources, the Parthians sent some of the captured legionnaires to the eastern border of their empire to guard it from the nomadic invaders. There, they settled and mingled with the local population. But some of them may have had a different fate. A legend says that they became mercenaries for a rebel king named Gigi, who built a fortress near the Talus River in present-day Kazakhstan. There, they faced another enemy, the Han Empire of China. The Chinese chronicles describe a battle in which they encountered a strange formation of soldiers who fought in a tight and disciplined manner. Some scholars believe that this was the Testudo, the famous Roman shield wall. The Chinese army eventually breached the fortress and captured some of the defenders who were relocated to a remote region of China, where they founded a city called Lycian. This city is said to have traces of Roman ancestry, such as Caucasian features and a fondness for bullfighting. However, this theory is based on weak and circumstantial evidence, and there is no archeological proof to support it. The legend of the Roman legionnaires in China remains a mystery to this day. The second story we will investigate is the disappearance of the Ninth Legion. The Ninth Spanish Legion was one of the oldest and most prestigious units of the Roman army. It was founded by Pompey in the first century BC and fought in many campaigns under Julius Caesar, Augustus and other emperors. It earned the title of Hispana or Spanish for its bravery and loyalty. It was sent to Britain by Emperor Claudius to conquer and pacify the island. There, it faced the rebellion of the warrior queen Boudicca and built the fortress of Eberachum, now York, to control the northern tribes. The last reliable record of the Ninth Legion dates from the year 108 AD, when it was stationed in York. After that, it vanishes from history. What happened to the Ninth Legion? Where did it go? Did it die in Britain? or did it leave the island? The most popular theory is that the Ninth Legion was wiped out by the Northern tribes, such as the Picts or the Brigantes, around the year 120 AD. This theory is based on the fact that the Ninth Legion was replaced by the Sixth Legion in York, and that Emperor Hadrian decided to build a wall to protect the Roman province from the barbarian raids. However, this theory has some problems. There is no historical or archeological evidence of a major battle or massacre involving the Ninth Legion. There is no mention of such a disaster in the Roman sources, nor any sign of a condemnation to oblivion, as was the case with other defeated legions. 
There are also some clues that suggest that the Ninth Legion may have survived and moved to another part of the Empire, such as the Rhine, the Danube, the East, or Egypt. For example, some inscriptions, tiles, and seals bearing the name or the symbol of the Ninth Legion have been found in various locations outside Britain, dating from the late 1st or early 2nd century AD. One of the most intriguing pieces of evidence is a pair of bronze seals that were found in Nijmegen in the Netherlands in 1916 and 1930. These seals have the inscription Leg Hisp Knife, which means Legion Hispana Knights, and were used to stamp official documents or letters. They are dated to the year 120 AD and suggest that the 9th Legion, or a detachment of it, was stationed in Nijmegen at that time. Another possible destination for the 9th Legion was Judea, where a major Jewish revolt broke out in 132 AD, led by Simon Bar Kokhba, who claimed to be the Messiah. This rebellion, known as the Bar Kokhba Revolt, lasted until 135 AD and was brutally suppressed by the Roman forces under Emperor Hadrian. Some scholars suggest that the 9th Legion was involved in this conflict and suffered heavy casualties, leading to its dissolution or reorganization. These are some of the theories and evidence that try to explain the mystery of the 9th Legion. However, none of them is conclusive or definitive. The fate of the 9th Legion remains a mystery to this day. The third and final story we will explore is the martyrdom of the Theban Legion. This is a legend that was born in the year 450 when the Bishop of Lyon claimed that some human remains in a mass grave belonged to the martyrs who formed the Augustan Theban Legion, killed in Agarnum, now St. Maurice, Switzerland, in the year 286 for refusing to obey orders. According to the legend, the Theban Legion was a unit of 6,000 soldiers, all Christians, who came from Thebes, Egypt. It was commanded by St. Maurice and was transferred to Rome in 284, where it pledged to disobey any order that was contrary to their faith. The Legion was sent to the Alps to help the co-emperor Maximian to suppress some revolts in 286. When they arrived in Agonum, Maximian ordered them to persecute the local Christians and to offer sacrifices to the pagan gods. The legionnaires, faithful to their faith, refused to do both. As a punishment, Maximian ordered the execution of one in every ten men, a process known as decimation. But even after several decimations, the legion remained firm in its faith, which enraged Maximian who ordered the slaughter of all the remaining members. Saint Maurice became the patron saint of the Holy Roman Empire and the spear that pierced the side of Jesus, according to the Gospel of John, was attributed to him. The spear became part of the royal emblems of the empire and was known as the Holy Lance. The story of the Theban Legion is more of a legend than a historical fact, as it emerged at a time when many stories about new martyrs were created to reinforce the faith. The Romans never ordered the execution of an entire legion, as this would have been a huge waste of resources and manpower. If the Theban legion existed, its fate must have been different, but it still remains a mystery to be solved. These are the stories of the lost legions of ancient Rome, three of the most fascinating and mysterious cases of the Roman army. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.